I feel like if I had a spirit food, it might be this dish. Hello. As we approach the end of 2020, I thought it would be fitting to do a New Year's Eve video. So I asked all of you, what are some of your traditions and what are some of the foods that you eat where you live on New Year's Eve? We're gonna look at dishes from Portugal, Netherlands, Slovakia, Bulgaria, and the Philippines. The dishes are very interesting and very diverse, so I hope that you all enjoy a little look at what everyone will be eating and doing on New Year's Eve around the world this year. Hi, my name is Ike Sophie and I live in Velp in the Netherlands. And for New Year's Eve, Dutch people eat oliebolle. Oliebolle literally translates to oil balls, so they're pretty much deep fried balls of dough. The main ingredients are flour, yeast, milk, sugar, and optional raisins. Although some people do use beer instead of yeast. I've never made them myself, my mom always makes them. I'd say most families in Holland will do this on New Year's Eve. Have a nice warm olie bowl where you're standing outside watching the fireworks in the cold. They eat mainly on New Year's Eve, but you can find them earlier in the year at special oliebolle krampjes, which are stands which you can find outside of supermarkets or shopping centres. And they're nice to enjoy over a cup of tea just on a cold day, but they're best on New Year's Eve. I like the tradition because it reminds me of when I was younger and my mom would bake them in the morning and we'd just be sat inside waiting for her to bring us the first oliebolle in and you basically spend all day eating olibola. Um, yeah, it just reminds me of those days. And they're just a perfect snack for cold weather. Oh my gosh. Yes, there are six on this plate. <laughs> These are so light and fluffy. Am I a professional donut maker? Oh yeah. I like how Ika was like, oh yeah, you just eat them all day. I could definitely be eating these all day. <coughs> Powder sugar, <coughs> down the wrong tube. <coughs> Keep eating donuts though. So I like that they're not that sweet. There's a little bit of the saltiness coming in, but most of the sweetness is just from the powdered sugar and cinnamon on top. And for me, that makes a donut so much more enjoyable. Those overly sweet sugared ones are just, they're not my, they're not my taste, but these are. Traditions are nice, you know? I wish I had a tradition like this in my family. My mom has never made me donuts. Mom, if you're watching, I'm about to say something that might shock all of you. I really like this. <laughs> Hi, my name is Maria and I live in Slovakia. Our typical New Year's Eve dish is kapusnica. It is a very hearty soup and I think every country in Europe has a variation of it. Sometimes kapusnica can be a part of a wedding or Christmas menu. Main ingredients are sauerkraut, meat, different kinds of meat products and sometimes dried mushrooms. It tastes salty and sour, but every family has a different recipe. Kapusnica is a perfect New Year's Eve dish because it's really rich and it fills you up for the whole night and it also uh, prevents you from getting a hangover. In the past, when uh, typical Slovak people used to work in the fields, they needed something easily accessible and special to satisfy their hunger. They believed that uh, sauerkraut is a really healthy meal in the winter. Kapusnica is my comfort food and because of its specific scent, it always reminds me of Christmas time. This tradition always brings back the memories of me and my family spending the holidays together. Look how cute. <laughs> how it's hot. I am a huge fan of sauerkraut. Like, you could put sauerkraut in anything and I would lap it up. It just smells so good. Mm. 
Wow. This like embodies winter. It's like, a, this is like winter in a dish to me. I mean, I've never had it before, but the flavors of it, how it warms you, like the smoky ham and the mushrooms. I mean, it is. It is good. Mm. Does anyone else have like that one food that it doesn't matter what it is, you know you're gonna like the dish because it has that ingredient? Like that's how I feel about sauerkraut. I found this little pot at a thrift store and I got it for 50 cents. I just love that. Ta-da! I liked how Mario said that the scent of this dish reminds her of this time of year. And it's such a nice sentiment and idea that you smell something cooking and it just brings back this flood of memories in a good way, you know, it's nice. Oh my God, I love this too. So far, this is a good one. This is a good episode, I'm happy. Hi, my name is Preslava and I'm from Sofia, Bulgaria, a country in Southeast Europe. In New Year's Eve, we usually eat banica with fortunes. Banica is one of the most traditional dishes in Bulgaria. It's prepared with filo pastry, eggs, cheese and yogurt. Banica is savory but also crunchy and a little soft in the inside. We eat it all through the year, but the one that we eat for New Year's Eve is a little special because we put fortunes or lux inside of it. In the past, those fortunes were actually dog wood tree branch. Nowadays, most people just put paper <laughs> inside. It's a meal that really bonds people together. It's also very fun. It could be layered, kind of like a cake, or it could be rolled to look like a snail, sort of. When I was a kid, my mom was sometimes putting coins inside and my dad would secretly dig in to find in which piece exactly is the coin and give it to me because I would get super overly excited that I got the coin, so I would be very rich and happy and lucky this year. So this sort of memories is the reason why I like this dish. I am so excited to try this. Oh my gosh. I love feta cheese. I think this might be one of the best things I've ever had. <laughs> Whoa. Mm, the feta cheese and the egg and the yogurt have cooked together and it's like kind of custardy in the middle, but it's like salty and then you have the honey on top so it's sweet and the phyllo. It's so flaky. Um, num, 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 num. <laughs> Making this was a journey. I'm definitely not a baker. I was so nervous. I was like watching the oven. I kept peeking in and watching like the dough cook and... <sighs> oh, what is my fortune? You will get to 500,000 subscribers in 2021. Oh my God. Who could have written this for me? <laughs> We have fun. I like how you end up with these little kind of like bodek style bites. Mm. It has like Spanakopita vibes, but I like this more. Definitely not mad that there's an entire pie left in my kitchen for me to be eating for the rest of the week. That's awesome. Hi, my name is Erica. I live in London, but I grew up in the Philippines. In the Philippines, it's common to have rice cakes for New Year. One of them is palitao. Palitao are sweet and chewy rice cakes shaped like small patties. It's super easy to make palitao. Its three main ingredients are glutinous rice flour, water, and sugar. It's then coated in sesame seeds, grated coconut, and more sugar. The name palitao comes from the word litao, which means to float or to appear. Making them is quite fascinating. You cook the rice patties in boiling water and you'll know it's ready when it floats to the surface. Its signature earthy, nutty, and the sweet taste comes from the grated coconut and sesame seeds. Meanwhile, its chewiness will sort of remind you of Japanese mochi. In my country, sticky rice cakes like palita are traditionally eaten during the new year. It's commonly believed that 
good fortune will stick to you throughout the year and it can even bind your family closer together. It brings back so many good memories and I think food is one great way to relive past moments. I'm very excited to taste this one. I wanted to see a bite, but I was like, no, I'm gonna do it on camera. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Wow. It was good. I can't believe I made a sticky rice cake. I feel very impressed. <laughs> Making this was a bit of an uphill battle. I actually struggled a lot. I think it was hard for me to get the dough consistency right. The first one I made was a monster. I like, it. I don't know what I was doing. It was so big. It looked like a tongue. <laughs> I was like, ooh. Even though I put like my best foot forward and show, you know, very kind of neat and it looks like I made each dish perfectly my first try, it's not true. <laughs> if you do want to try to make this, you do have to use glutinous rice flour. You can't just use normal rice flour because the normal one will not give you the sticky rice cake. The sesame and sugar on top is also really good. The unsweetened coconut gives you like yummy coconut flavor and the sugar helps brighten it, but it's not like a saccharine dish, you know? I do hope that good luck will stick to me. This tastes amazing, but more so, I just can't believe that I made this one myself. This feels, I feel very accomplished. <laughs> Hi Beryl, hi rest of the world, my name is Guy. I live in Lagos, Portugal, that's way down in the south. In Portugal there's no one official or traditional dish for New Year's Eve, but one dish that can go with anything for any occasion and thus New Year's is a sorda. The main ingredients are quite simple, sourdough bread or rustic kind of bread that has gone stale, and cilantro garlic and olive oil, salt and pepper, that's it. It tastes earthy from the garlic and funky from the garlic, but it tastes quite fresh from the cilantro as well. And then you can poach an egg on it. When the egg yolk mixes into the whole thing, I don't know, it just tastes like home, it tastes like heaven, it's awesome. <laughs> it just goes well with everything and it's, it's, it's something that everybody can agree to. It's, it's a very traditional dish for us. It's all about what Portuguese cuisine is all about. It's simplicity. Since I can remember <laughs> that I can eat stuff, I eat a sorda. It's a warm dish for the belly, but also for the heart. It's really nice. The final dish that I'm trying is a sorda from Portugal and it smells garlicky and delicious. My God, I poached this egg perfectly. I don't know, can you see? Oh my God. Ooh, that garlic. She's kicking in there. This is kind of reminiscent of what you put with escargot. How it's like butter and garlic and I guess maybe it's cilantro, I don't know. It's true about New Year's Eve that a lot of times people are like, oh, it's a night for extravagant foods. And this is quite a simple dish, but man, it's delicious. Guy said something that I actually want to bring up that in Portugal, he said they don't have that one dish for New Year's. And you know, for this series, and I've read it in comments, people are like, oh, I don't have this. And I live in that country. It's not about that. Like this is also a series about people and the things that make them feel good, the things that they like. and. The idea that this is a family tradition of his, I think that that's also worth sharing just as much as a national dish might be worth sharing because the whole point of this is to understand one another and understand one another's foods. And some of those foods are just personal loves and likes. And that's, that's cool with me. When I posted that I was gonna do this video, a lot of you shared your New Year's Eve traditions with me. And so I wanted to finish this video by sharing mine with you. That one of my traditions is that, you know, we all go around and we talk about something that we're looking forward to in the new year. So I did that with everybody who did this video with me and I will start. This past year obviously has been very crazy. And something that I'm looking forward to for next year is seeing people again. I miss people. I do. I really do. 
I think 2020 has been particularly hard for everyone, but it has taught us a valuable lesson that you can't control everything in life. For next year, I hope we get a vaccine and people can travel and see their relatives again. And we get to experience that simple human relationships again, to bond again, to be spending time with friends again. That's one thing that I really hope for 2021. My wish is that we start finding the, the hidden powers within us and between us so that we can keep growing in love and in freedom instead of fear and control. I think it is possible that if people will try to be more responsible and uh, not blame others for the situation we are in, uh, that we will make the world the place we know and love again. I wanted to jump back in quickly and just say a big thank you to all of you who have been supportive and been a part of my videos this year in 2020. And I am very excited to keep doing this in 2021. So I will see you all in the new year. <laughs>